Sports and welcome back to this special Sunday on the Good Sports Canberra Cup Day for 1995. And that's, of course, Qantas Canberra Cup Day in the horses and it's also Yukonuba Canberra Cup insofar as the Greyhounds are concerned. Many visiting callers in town today to talk about their uh, race calling careers. They'll be joining us here on uh, the Good Sports. Very shortly we'll be talking to Ron Paps, Ian Craig, Brian Martin, Wayne Wilson and Des Hoisted. We'll be Tony Campbell's guest out at the Canberra Racecourse today. And as well as that, we'll be talking to Paul Ambrosoli and Ron Hawkswell here for the Canberra Greyhound Cup. So that's all coming up very shortly here on this racing special. On My first guest online this morning is Ron Paps from Tab Radio in Adelaide. Good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing well on this uh, this Canberra Cup day. It should be a great day this afternoon. Oh, I'd agree with that. I'm itching to get out to the track. I've had my taste of Qantas this morning flying in and uh, really looking forward to getting out there for the, the 1995 Qantas Canberra Cup. And, and, and what a great program they have framed too by the club. It's, it's going to be a tremendous race. And even from way back when uh, the nominations were first called, I think Gay Waterhouse, I remember looking at the sheet and I thought at first glance you had about 100 horses nominated, but I think it was about 20 odd. Um, the coming stable was well represented in the initial nominations, as were the Freedmans and, uh, oh, you know, the big names are all there. So uh, it's shaped up to be a good race and that's certainly what we're going to see this afternoon. That's for sure, Ron. Ron, have you been to Canberra before? I've been there once and uh, a bit of a funny story if we've got time. I was in the army. Actually, I got called up in the very first two-year national service uh, way back in 1960, I think it was, and um, 60. What year was it? 65, I think. Anyway, I was in the very first of the two-year national service intakes. The only lottery I've ever won, my dad. And uh, I was on a course at the time at Broad Meadows, just out of uh, Melbourne, sort of about halfway between Melbourne and Kilmore which is a well-known racing centre, if I can use that yes, to sort of is. paint the picture for people. And uh, we had the weekend off, and it happened to be the Inter-Dominion weekend, and the Inter-Dominion was being run at Harrell Park. And I think I had uh, an FC Holden at the time, We're going back a few years, I can tell you, and I rustled up a couple of other desperates like myself, and it was off pay week. I think we had about, I reckon we had about, um, on today's figure, probably about $35 between the three of us. Yeah. Um, and somehow or other, we, we got up there, we didn't eat very much, I can tell you, we certainly didn't drink very much, but the three of us, for about our $35 collectively, we went to the Inner Dominion after paying our admission, we somehow had enough petrol to get there and back, filling up just the once along the way somewhere, and when we got to Canberra on the Friday night, we got as far as Canberra on the Friday night, and we had no uh, money for accommodation, I think, so we either slept in or under the car on the side of the road, and I remember waking up at about five o'clock in the morning, and everything was just ice. Yeah. Everything. And I've got a very cold recollection of Canberra from that time on. That's the only time I've ever been to Canberra. And it was just staying under night. I slept under the car because of being a bit bulky. There wasn't enough room in the car for me. So, so yeah, so um, we didn't see much of it at all. Just plenty of ice in the morning. It was a very frosty night. Yeah, well, hopefully you'll get to see a bit more on this uh, visit and especially the, uh, the lovely Canberra race course. Oh, well, we're doing it in style here because uh, we... Uh, have uh, got wonderful accommodation at the James Court Apartments and as I say, didn't have to worry about the old FC, Qantas have looked after us very well. That's great, Ron. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Ron, a race calling. When did you decide to be a race caller? Um, when I knew I was going to be too tall to be a jockey, I always wanted to be a jockey when I was a kid. I'm from a totally non-racing family. I'm the black sheep of the family in that sense. But I was always fascinated in Adelaide in those days, many years ago, we only had races broadcast on a Saturday. And I was always fascinated by the calling. And I, from that time, I wanted to be a jockey. I'd never seen a race because my parents just weren't inter interested in racing. So it was all in what I could see in the pictures, uh, in the papers, or magazines, whatever. You, uh, whatever. There wasn't uh, television coverage of racing in those days. So it was only a, a, a picture that I could paint in my own mind, what I could dream of, what racing was like. And eventually, I, I found out that uh, racing was at Victoria Park, which wasn't all that far from home. So when I was around about 11 or 12, I would tell Mum and Dad I was going around to one of my mates to play, and I'd walk all the way to Victoria Park, which was probably about four and a half miles there and four and a half miles back from where we lived. And uh, Victoria Park being crown land, you didn't have to pay to get in on to the flat in those days, so I could get to the races. And 
which is a bit stupid when you think about it. There's a 10 or 11 year old kid walking around a race course in those days, huge crowd. Anything could have happened to me. But that's where I got my uh, first insight to racing. I've been hooked ever since. When I was 13, I uh, started to practice with a great big reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder up in the back of the grandstands where I could afford to get in and one thing or another, and it's led to where I am today. Right, so you, you're an Adelaide boy originally. I do remember you uh, spending some time in Melbourne, of course. Yes. Uh, when I, uh, I was on my honeymoon, actually, for my second marriage, and uh, we got back and there was a, a letter from Three Years in Melbourne offering us a job or offering me a job in Melbourne, and uh, it, it seemed very interesting, very exciting. I think the pay increase was about $10 a week, so there wasn't much money in it. It probably cost us to go there with the, the higher cost of living. But yes, so my wife and I, Judy, we, we packed up and shot over to Melbourne. We were there for nearly six years, I think. Yeah, so prior to that time, you'd, you'd uh, secured yourself a job in Adelaide calling. That's right, yes. Yeah, and then, then it was to 3UZ in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, your, your time there at 3UZ, I, I must uh, say I, I remember you calling on 3UZ in Melbourne. I was there at that stage and uh, one horse name I must bring up, a, a trotter's name, Maori's Idol. That was probably one of the uh, most memorable calls you'd have done of, of Maori's Idol's races. Uh, he was a great horse, wasn't he? Yes, you've got a good memory. Yeah, I can remember back in those days. I can remember your call of uh, the Hamilton Cup, was it, back in... Now, uh, my years might be out here. It was the late 70s yes. when Maori's Idol raced against the Pacers, and uh, I can remember at that stage 3UZ saying that it was one of the most requested calls to hear, that mm. call. Uh, he was a great horse, and horses, you know, they bring out the best of everybody, and no matter what uh, vocation you're in, but he, he was a great horse. But the thing that was uh, great about that, he was a, a trotter taking on the uh, the paces and he beat them comprehensively in fact i remember when they went to the bell lap they rang the bell for him and then they rang it for the others when they got there he was that far in front he, he was just a super horse and um it's just a shame really that he never got his chance to prove himself in america because i think he would have been outstanding by world standards yeah that's for sure and the other shame of course is that he didn't get to win an inter dominion no but we won't talk about that, will we? No, we won't. We'll just say he should have. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, what about in the uh, the gallops in Victoria? Do you recall uh, any of your calls there, Rob? Oh yes, uh, I remember. Uh, I, I didn't do a lot of gallop calling. I was mainly the trotting caller in Melbourne, yeah. but I, I quite often got um, some country meetings on a Saturday. Uh, Brian Martin would be calling the, the main city meetings, and uh, I'd be doing some of the country meetings, and then go onto the trots on a Saturday night after that. They were busy times, but I remember one day at Maui rather infamous call uh, they put the races back 10 minutes or so for some reason but uh, they must have told the starter just five minutes and i thought i had plenty of time so i went to the toilet and uh, i was in there for a little while and i suddenly thought gee things are a bit quiet out there not much noise about so i strolled out washed my hands strolled out went around the front of the stand everybody's in the stand and there's the field just starting to leave the starting stalls <laughs> so Panic. they warned us it would be 10 minutes but they must have I don't know, the starter must have thought it was only five minutes. So um, I raced up the back of the grandstand and uh, unfortunately I just had no breath. There was no way I could call a race. So I think I did what most uh, commentators with a bit of experience would have done at the time. I just pulled the plug out a bit and we had a technical fault. <laughs> well done. And came back about a minute later with the result. Yeah. Somehow yeah. the fault rectified itself. But, Fair uh, enough, Ron. It was, but I had no way in the world I could, could have called. I just wouldn't have got any breath. Yeah, so of course after Melbourne then you uh, you moved back to Adelaide to take up the number one position at, uh, well it was uh, you know, 5DM, 5DM then, then it went to 5AA and now it's Racing Radio I believe. That's right, Tab Radio here and uh, the station owned by the South Australian TAB and uh, well we've got a very busy schedule here. If I could just explain a little bit about how the station starts. Sure. We, we have a special licence where we're basically only allowed to talk about racing we can't play a song with the uh, singing we can play short uh, snippets of music just to fill in and break up um, totes and one thing or another every now and again just for a bit of variety that's but they're only allowed for about 30 seconds or so so it's, it's totally racing basically and we start of a morning at 10 o'clock the station switches on at 10 o'clock we commence with the scratchings and we close and go off air once all clear is given on the last trot or greyhound race of the night and so from, say, about 10.30 of an evening till uh, 10 o'clock the next morning, uh, there's just dead air. Uh, right. That's that's the restriction by our licence. But it's working very well. People have become used to it. 
And, of course, another innovation here in Adelaide over the last 12 months has been the introduction of tab form, where the tab is uh, producing its own paper, form paper, which comes out every second day, and uh, it's uh, meeting the demands of the punters quite well here in South Australia. It had a bit of a rocky start, but it's now settled down and going very, very nicely. And the reason this brought about was brought about was the simple fact that the local newspaper uh, was demanding simply too much money to print uh, fields and, uh, and cover racing. So Tab took the bit between its teeth and produced its own form paper. Oh, that's a great idea, Ron, because, of course, the punters, they can never have too much information, and, uh, you know, that's what they're after these days. There's, there's plenty of information around, and to get it to the punter only encourages them, of course, to, to bet on the horses. Well, that's right. So we're talking around about two million here, too, and, uh, uh, of course, Tab won't save that two million by producing its own paper. Some of that will go into its own running costs for the new Tab form, but they'll certainly save quite a considerable um, amount of money that can be um, ploughed back into racing, and that was the aim of it all. That's a great idea. OK, Ron, well, uh, thanks for joining us here on uh, Triple S. I know it's a busy day and you'll want to head out to the uh, race course shortly for the big day of racing. And, uh, of course, our, uh, our host out there, our own Tony Campbell, will be uh, assigning various races, so you'll be calling a race uh, amongst all the other callers today. Yes, I'll uh, be looking forward to that. It, it's a little bit unusual when I come up to um, the eastern seaboard because uh, outside of Melbourne, of course, your races go the other way. And That's right. It just takes a race or two to just uh, get the feel of it, but we'll be right. We'll be out there this afternoon, and, uh, and special thanks to uh, Triple S for having me on this morning, and special thanks, of course, to the good folk of Canberra. Looking forward to catching up with a lot of them out there, and uh, big thanks, of course, to our major sponsor, Qantas. That's Ron Paps joining us online.